This sermon is titled Take God at His Word Be Enriched as You Listen Every year uh, we receive a word of the Lord uh, from pastor and uh, how many of you remember what the word of the Lord last year was for 2023 Pray through till breakthrough right uh, and what is the word of the Lord for this year for 2024 is conquer through faith come on everybody say it one more time yes conquer through faith Take your Jerichos. Conquer simply means to seize, to take complete control, aggressively, furiously, ferociously, to conquer. We don't conquer by sitting back, relaxing, and enjoying the service. Ain't gonna happen, right? <laughs> we conquer through faith, and we take our Jerichos. It's not going to be handed in a platter. Right, Jerichos represent God's promises for us, but the people of Israel still had to cross the River Jordan. They had to go and take it. Amen. So, conquer through faith, take your Jerichos, and subdue your adversaries. Uh, I had to look at the dictionary for what subdue actually means. You know, so it means shh, you know, silencing the, the adversaries. I love this verse in Psalm 8. Uh, it says, you have silenced my enemies. With my praise, you have silenced my enemies. Amen. Right, so conquer through faith. Everything the people of Israel did around the wall of Jericho was an expression of their faith. They did not understand why they had to walk seven days and seven times, but they did it anyway in obedience through faith. Amen. Are you with me? All right. And so how do we build our faith? Uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 17. It says, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Right. We need to learn to feed on his word and let his word nourish us, fill us, equip us, empower us. That's what his word does. Be determined to conquer. You know, as we go through life, life is not easy. Amen? <laughs> life is not smooth. It's not like a walk in the park. Uh, but we got to be determined to conquer. Run this race with faith. Stand firm. Stand and fight and not give up. Pray through till breakthrough. Amen? Because the victory is ours. First John chapter 5 verse 4 it says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that God has, God has overcome the world. Our faith. And so as sons and daughters of us living God, he says, you've already overcome. In this world you will have troubles, but fear not for I have overcome the world. Right? And for us to have the title overcomers, that means... We have to overcome something. That means there are going to be challenges, isn't it? There are going to be hurdles. But fear not, he says. Victory is yours. Amen? So this is, what, this is the word of the Lord for this year. And, and one of the key essential for us to conquer through faith and take our Jerichos and build our faith is to simply take God at His word. Can I say that again? To build our faith, one of the key essential is to simply take God at His word. Amen. Most of the times, uh, we take people at their word. He's a good boy. Good boy, it's a good girl, it's a good girl, right? If boss says that you're going to get the raise next year, the money has not been credited to your account. But even before that happens, call to all your friends, schedule a party. Why? Because you're going to get that bonus. What's happening? You simply took your boss's word, boss at his word, isn't it? Yes or no? Or is it just me? 
By the way, my boss is watching online, so hi, boss. <laughs> right. Uh, there's something beautiful about taking a person, you know, at their word. And they, when they make statements like, I give you my word, right? Transactions happen. Like, Your word is enough. So we need to learn to take God at his word. Amen. One of my favorite word in the English, actually the only favorite word in the language of English is hope. Um, I don't know why. Like even before I knew what it really meant, uh, the sound, something about the sound of that word hope uh, did something inside. You know, and, uh, but in our context, when we use the word hope, it's more for uh, like a wishful thinking. I hope it rains. I hope it doesn't rain. I hope he finishes the sermon soon. <laughs> that hope might come true, actually, but <laughs> keep hoping. So you see, when we use that word hope in our context, it's more of wishful thinking. Right? There's no 100% guarantee to it. Uh, I have a five-year-old. Uh, his name is Ethan. Um, now, if you, ha if you have a child, children, or if you've been around children, you don't need to have children, okay? You know that they are wonderful, they are so beautiful, so elegant, so, <laughs> so cute, but sometimes can be very annoying, you know? If my wife told him something that, okay, you know, he'll be getting it from her, and I didn't know about that transaction, and I entered the scene and said, no, you're not getting it, he'll start manifesting like a principality, you know? <laughs> and I think most of the times, we got to be like children, isn't it? And to just take God at his word so passionately, so ferociously, he's like, you said it. I'm going to take you at your word. It simply means to believe in what he said. There's one other scenario in the Bible that says, Jesus tells to the disciples, I'm sure you know this, let's go to the other side. So what does that mean? It simply means, let's go to the other side. There's no pit stop in the middle, you know. <laughs> but what happens? They go through, as they are passing through, they come across the storm, and they panic, like we all do. Don't look at them like sinners, okay? It's like, yeah, disciples, unholy people, you know? When we go through life, no matter what the promises have been released over us, when we go through storms of life, we begin to panic. And we ask this amazing question. Do you not care that we are perishing? Where are you? The storms of life can stop us can blind us from taking God at his word. Are you with me, church? Yes? There are three simple keys for us to take God at his word, for this truth to go deep into our hearts, for it to be rooted. Three simple keys. Uh, media team, by the way, this TV is not working. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Right, the first truth is God cannot lie. And the second truth is God's word is truth. And the third point is that God's word will be fulfilled. Okay, what's the first point? God. God's word is truth and God's word will be fulfilled. Okay, I need to hear the first point. I know you all had your coffees and your teas, okay? So, God. Okay, one more time. God. Very good. Awesome. <laughs> right. Um, let's dive in. Are you ready to go a little deeper today? Okay, I am. Okay, you can come with me. So, to take God at his word, there are three things that we must be convinced about. The first one is God cannot lie. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? 
God is not a man that he should lie. Titus chapter 1 verse 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. And one last scripture from Psalm 89 verse 35. Psalm 89 verse 35, it says, I have sworn an oath to David, and in my holiness, I cannot lie. Isn't that wonderful? I have sworn an oath to David, and in my holiness, I cannot lie. It does not say God doesn't lie. There's a difference. And when we say God is holy, that means there is no one like him. If I were to ask this question, what does holiness mean to you, and pass this mic around, most of your response would be about righteousness or moral purity. Which is all right. I don't commit murder, I don't commit adultery, I don't steal, I don't lie, etc., etc. So when we say holiness, this is what we think of. Moral purity or righteousness. When we say God is holy, what we are saying is that there is no one like him on earth or in the heavens. Amen? For example, if, we, if an alien from the planet Mars, Martian, example, okay, were to come to planet earth and ask me, who are you? I can... Point my finger and say, I'm like one of them. I'm a human being like them. But there is no equal, no comparison. In Isaiah, God says, to whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. He is set apart. And so in His holiness, He is merciful. In His holiness, He is gracious. In His holiness, He cannot sin. It is not in His capacity to sin. When I believe in the Lord Jesus and accept him as the Lord and Savior, I am saved from the state of sin. But as long as I'm living in this body, I still have the capacity to commit the acts of sin. But God is holy. And in his holiness, he cannot lie. We need to understand the truth and let it sink in really deep. It's not that he does not lie. He cannot lie. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18. Hebrews 6 verse 18 says, I'm reading from the International Children's Bible. Okay, because it was simple. (laughs) These two things cannot change. God cannot lie when he makes a promise. And he cannot lie when he makes an oath. He cannot lie when he makes a promise. And he cannot lie when he makes an oath. His word is consistent because he is the word. We know how the gospel of John starts in chapter 1, isn't it? Right, so God cannot lie. Can you say it after me? God cannot lie. So whatever the promises has been that declared over you, know that he does not lie. Are you with me? Okay. Are you still clinging on to that hope that I said, you know, the sermon will not take long? Yes? Okay, good. Keep, you know, we are there. And because he cannot lie, God's word is truth. His word is truth. Now, we, I'm sure we understand the difference or know the difference between facts and truth. Isn't it? Facts can change, weather forecast. It may rain today, it may not rain today. Those are facts. Truth is constant. He is constant. The fact is the woman suffered with the issue of blood for 12 years. The truth is Jesus can heal her. The fact is, can be, I do not have sufficient funds in my bank account. The truth is, 
He is my prov provider. Did I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Psalm 119 verse 140 says, Your word is very pure. Therefore, your servant loves it. The entirety, Psalm 119 verse 60, verse 160, it says, The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. You know, Psalm 119 is said to be an expression of love poetry to the word of God. Psalm 119 has 176 verses. And in every single one of those verses, you will find these words. You'll find the words word, way, precepts, statutes, law, commands, promise. Verse after verse after verse. I make the Bible college students do this activity every year is that go to Psalm 119, every single verse that you find these words, underline them. Psalm 119 is beautiful. It's a, it's a love poetry to the word of God. And John chapter 17, verse 17, it says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. God wants us to take him at his word. Trust the one who is worthy of your trust. We owe him our trust. Can I say that again? We owe him our trust. Luke chapter 12. Consider the ravens. For they neither sow nor reap. Which have neither storehouses nor barn. And God feeds them. Consider the lilies. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? This is God saying, take me at my word. Are you not more precious? Are you not more of value than these? Take me at my word. Philippians 4.19 God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. That again God is saying take me at my word. Church are you with me? Once again I want to remind us this morning what has God spoken over your life? Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Trust the trustworthy one. Amen. Trust the trustworthy one. We owe him our trust. When we take God at his word, it simply says, I trust you, Lord. I don't know what's on the other side, but I trust you. I will walk through the Red Sea. I will trust you. I don't know where you're taking me, but because you said go, I will go. That was the life of Abraham, isn't it? God said, pack your bags, leave your father's house, and go to the land I will show you. He didn't show him the land yet. We know the story. Abraham didn't ask a bunch of questions. Okay, uh, what's the landmark? You know, is there a Deepa bakery there? You know, so from there? <laughs> no. How many acres? In, you know, nothing. He said, go, and he went. What was it about the voice of Jesus in the words that Jesus spoke? Jesus said, follow me. He didn't present Please see, this is the plan. If you follow me, you get all these benefits, PEF, etc., etc., tax benefits, medical insurance, health insurance. He said, follow me, and they followed. Do you remember the story uh, where Jesus comes to Peter, and Peter's just tried catching fish all night, and 
Jesus asks the obvious, have you not caught any fish? Um, Peter says, no, master, we tried catching it all night. And Peter, Jesus says, cast your net on the other side. I'm sure you just heard me. You know, you tried catching fish all night. No success. But because you said, Because you said, I'm going to cast my net on the other side. And it is the same Peter later in his, one of his letters. It says, cast your burdens unto Jesus. Take him at his word. Peter makes a very interesting statement. Peter is actually a very interesting person, isn't it? Uh, Jesus one of his Jesus' sermon, not a very popular sermon, where he lost a lot of followers when he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, you'll see you later. You know, it's been good knowing you. Uh, and Jesus turns to his disciples and asks him, are you also going to leave me? But in John chapter 6, verse 68, Peter has his amazing moment. He says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Church, can we have that faith this morning? For us to receive the peace that passes all understanding, we need to give up our right to understand. I don't understand your ways, Lord, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to follow you because with you are the words of eternal life. Heavens and the earth will pass away, but your word will not pass away. Are you with me? Yes? Okay. We are marching in to the last point. I heard an amen. <laughs> so the first point is God cannot lie. Second point is God's word is truth. And the third point is God's word will be fulfilled. His word will be Fulfill. Okay. Why don't you turn to the person next to you, left and right, and say, God's word will be fulfilled. You don't need to know what that word is. Come on, don't be so shy. <laughs> we have this interesting scripture in First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For this reason we also thank God. Without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. He is simply saying, you took God at his word. In Isaiah chapter 55, we know this verse, it says, my word shall go forth and not come back void until it accomplishes what it is supposed to. Amen. In Psalm 89 verse 34 it says, My covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. My covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. God is watching over his word to perform. Jeremiah has this incredible encounter with the Lord in Jeremiah chapter 1. And in verse 12, God asks him this incredible question. He says, Jeremiah, what do you see? I see an almond tree. Now, if I had that vision, if I had that encounter... I, I don't know, I, I don't think I, I would be able to tell the difference between, you know, what tree that is, you know. But, but for most of us, I think that could be the case. Okay. okay. So God says, what do you see? I see an almond tree, Lord. Okay, I'm getting ready to perform my word. But what we need to understand is that the almond tree in their region, in that region, is the first tree to blossom when the seasons change. And so what God was saying is, there's a new season coming, and the new season is here. 
I'm getting ready to perform my word. And I want to remind you today is that there is a new season coming. The new season is here. The winter has passed. The springtime has come. The God is about to perform his word. God's word will be fulfilled. Amen. In Joshua chapter 21 verse 45. Can I request the worship team to come up on stage please? Joshua chapter 21 verse 45. It says, Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. Not one of Lord's good promises were failed. Every one of them was fulfilled. So church, I wanted to remind us once again that in life, there will be battles that you need to fight. There will be Red Seas that you will have to cross and have the faith to cross. But don't give up. Conquer by faith. Pray through till breakthrough. Take your Jerichos. Take. It's yours, right? Don't just wait. I was like, yes, please give it to me. No. Because God, whatever promises has been released over your life, is yes and amen. Amen. Why don't we stand to our feet this morning? Very simple points, but this truth needs to go deep into our hearts we need to learn to take God at his word when the Bible says he will never leave you nor forsake you that means he will never leave you nor forsake you I am with you till the end of age take him at his word we're going through storms of life. I don't know where the next paycheck or how I'm going to pay my rent. I know you are with me. The Lord is my shepherd and that is enough. He leads me beside still waters. We're praying for a healing. He said that he is our Jehovah, Rapha. We take him at his word. You are my healer. He is a provider. And I know that this room is pregnant with God's promises. And I want to say, prepare yourself, brace yourself, because God is about to perform His word. Amen. Can we worship for some time, man? I'm already loved, I'm already chosen, I know who I am, I know what you've spoken, I'm already loved, more than I could imagine, and that is enough, I'm already loved. Already chosen. I know who I am. I know what you spoke. I'm already loved more than I could imagine. And that is enough. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I am love. I know who I, I am. Him. I know what you have spoken. I know what you spoken. I'm already loved. More than I could imagine. And that is enough. And that is enough. Daddy is in
enough, and that is enough, and that is enough. For you are enough, you are enough. Well, let's declare that it's a you are enough. For you are enough in every situation, every circumstance. You are, you are enough. enough. You are enough. You are enough. So I am enough. You are. You are enough. So I am. you for your word that's filled with promises the Bible says for the sake of Joseph he blessed the Potiphar's house and you declare that and say Lord for my sake your word says for my sake I'm your son I'm your daughter bless my household bless my marriage bless my family bless my children I'm holding on to that because I know surely your goodness and your mercy will follow me. Amen. Surely your goodness and your mercy will follow me for all the days of my life. And so I take you at your word, Lord. We take you at your word this morning as a church, as a community of believers. We say, we take you at your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I will be content in every circumstance Jaira you are enough this one last time just the voices come I will be content in every circumstance 
circumstance, you are Jireh, you are enough, you are enough, you are more than enough, you are more than enough, Jesus. Lord, we simply take you at your word like a child, with the innocence of a child. We trust you. We trust you this morning. We trust you with our lives. We trust you with our future. We trust you. We, we take you at your word. unto me according to your word. We surrender, Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. I thank you, Jesus. Let's close. Let's receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift his countenance over you and give you peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.